nuevamente. Mi Welcome again. In the name of the staff of LACNIC, from now on, we'll go on with the ordinary assembly. Here we have the members of the board together with uh, Eduardo Jimenez, the legal advisor of LACNIC, whom uh, we welcome. And uh, now le we are going to give you uh, show you a video in, with the instructions of uh, how to vote. Welcome to uh, LACNIC's General Assembly. Before we start with the meeting and uh, voting, remember that only the members inside uh, the room and to register for the assembly will be able to vote. The voting system will only be operating through um, the uh, network of the assembly and you only can enter with one device. You must have your badges uh, at hand uh, and log in through the system events uh, dot net, uh, slash uh, uh, assembly uh, uh, slash login. So, we, you will have, there will be a device available in the room, in the hall to vote. How to vote in the assembly? Enter the uh, hall and uh, enter the ID where it says ID Gaffete. Can't you identify the ID? It's the number in your badge under the barcode. Now enter your assembly code. It's the number in the label at uh, the back of your badge. Enter Ingresar and you'll be ready to vote. How many organizations do you vote for? If it's only one, choose uh, um, send uh, a favor and then enviar voto and then confirm. If there are two or more, do they all uh, plan to vote the same? If you have two or more organizations and you um, Choose the same, uh, have the same choice. Uh, choose the right, send vote, and confirm it. If you are voting in the name of uh, more uh, two or more, and check on a differential vote. Uh, choose uh, the choice of each uh, organization, then send vote uh, and confirm vote. Notice that regardless of the number of organizations you are voting for and if the votes are differentiated or not, after pressing uh, the button uh, send vote, you'll always be capable of uh, canceling and choosing again. When the next question is active, you must again enter the the um, data on IED Gaffete and uh, the code and repeat the entire procedure. Thank you. Before we go on, let me mention a couple of important uh, things that we needed to consider. To vote through the assembly voting system, it is absolutely necessary for you to be uh, connected to LACNIC slash Assemblea in capital letters. And at the assembly, only the members have a voice, so only the comments uh, by uh, the people in person, all, only the members in person will be heard uh, during this assembly and here. The questions or comments through Zoom won't be uh, reproduced uh, at the assembly during the session. We'll have a computer at the end, uh, at the back of the room, and there you'll be able to audit the voting. It's important to consider that only you can only enter the system from one device at a time. First of all, I invite Oscar Robles, ex uh, CEO of LACNIC, who will uh, try the voting system. Go ahead, Oscar. Thank you, Alessia. So, as we always do, we are going to test, uh, to check that everybody can connect uh, the system and try to solve any troubleshooting. So, this is just a test uh, uh, voting. So, if you help me. So, can we have the slides or the element for the test voting? This is not the test voting. And do we have, once again, the URL where you have to log in? And the question. And the URL 
Where are you going to connect to log in? Bueno, me pueden confirmar que tienen las instrucciones para. Please confirm that you have the connections, the instructions to connect to the voting system. Please confirm that because I'm not so sure. Some of you are even voting. Okay, so let us once again show the video because some were distracted when we showed the video. So let us show the video and please pay attention and pause wherever they say where you have to connect so you can connect. Welcome to LACNIX General Assembly. Before we begin with the meeting and the voting of the day, please remember, only members who are in the room and who are registered for the meeting will be allowed to vote. The voting system will only work through the assembly network. Access assist the to the meeting is allowed only on one device at a time. Everyone must have their badges on hand to enter the username and password and to log in through the system. This is the URL, eventos.lacnic.net slash asamblea slash login. So go back to where the screen is frozen. Let me remind you that you have to be in the network LACNIC hyphen assemblea. So now let us go on to the voting screen which I guess already has quite a number of votes. So I took the thunder away, but we have to do this exercise. The question is, if you have to uh, choose between beer and coffee in the afternoon coffee breaks, what would you choose? Dark beer, barrel beer, or IPA beer? So you will recall that this online system or electronic system represents the vote during the assembly. It doesn't seek to have secret voting. We can visualize who is voting for each of the options. So it has been designed as in that way. And this has been done for transparency purposes, as Alicia was saying. At the end of the assembly, we'll have a computer ready so that you can check who wishes to do so, that your votes have been recorded in each of the three motions that have been foreseen for this assembly. So in this case, the vote was for uh, barrel beer. So we'll take that suggestion into account. Hopefully we have resources to do so at some moment. Bueno, cerramos entonces eh, la votación. So we close the voting, the testing, and we'll continue. Alicia. So thank you, Oscar. So as from this moment, we'll be starting the session of the Honorary Member Assembly. We would like to welcome Alejandro Guzman, President of LACNIC Sport, who will take the floor as from this moment. Alejandro, you have the floor. At 4.37 p.m. on May 8, 2024, we open the second call for the Ordinary Member Assembly of the 
Internet Registry of Latin America and the Caribbean convened on May 8, 2024. This has call has been communicated through a circular note submitted to the members 30 days ahead of time on April 4, 2024. As per the attendance registry, we have 202 members who have 670 votes. As a result, and having verified quorum to hold a valid session, we will pass on to the first item in the order of business, appointment of the Assembly President and Secretary. Considering that the President, myself, is present and Esteban Lescano, the Secretary of the Board, as per Article 16 of the Social Bylaws signed in 2022, they will have the positions of the Assembly President and Secretary, respectively. Regardless of the above, we inform the Assembly that the legal advisor of LACNIC, Dr. Eduardo Jimenez de Arishka, will be providing assistance, who has also been the secretary of these assemblies since the year 2004. We'll now pass on to consider the second item in the agenda to consider and approve the annual report, the balance, the inventory, expenses and resources, external auditors report and the report of the fiscal mission as at December 31st, 2023. Prior to consideration of these financial reports, the board through its president, the executive director, Oscar Roles, and the Diego Mena, finance manager, and the other members of the fiscal commission will take the floor summarizing our respective activities and describing the documents to be approved by this assembly. So let us start with the presentation by the of the board. As has been the case in previous assemblies, we prepare reports of the different sections of LACNIC, including the board. So we're going to tell you what the board did in the course of 2023. This year, we'll be not focusing on the information we provided in previous years. Those who came to the meeting in 2023 and in 2022, we try to clarify the roles of the board because there was confusion as to the roles of the board and what was the responsibility of the board or not. So we had to do an educational activity explaining what the board did and what the board did not did and the responsibilities. This afternoon we'll be focusing specifically on some of the things that have to do with the features and the activities done by the board in 2023 and will not go into the details that we did last year. So let us have a look at the structure of the board in 2024. Can we have the next slide, please? So first of all, let's have a look at the structure of the board for this year, the functions, operations and characteristics of the board, the documents and guidelines of the board that we worked on in 2023, most relevant resolutions of the board in 2023, as well as other aspects in which the board was involved during the previous year. So structure of the board, at this moment, the board has eight members. This year, we have one further members. As you recall, we agreed on increasing the number of board members by one at the assembly two years ago. So last year, we incorporated a further member, and next year, we'll be adding one further member of the board in order to sum up nine members. Now we have eight members of the board. Myself, Alejandro Guzman is the president. Alejandro Baronil from Brazil is vice president. Gabriel Adonailo is a treasurer from Argentina. Wartna Maya is a second treasurer from Brazil. Esteban Lejcano is a secretary from Argentina. Carmen Denis is a second secretary from Mexico. Javier Salazar and Rafael Lito Ibarra from Mexico and Salvador respectively are the other members of the board with eight members now. What are the priority topics in which the board is involved normally? Basically, the board is in charge of 
the guidelines regarding the way the organization works. The assembly defines the general tasks, but, but the board is in charge of implementing these guidelines and ensuring that we regulate everything for the purpose of their execution. So we work closely with the staff in order to define the priority issues every year. And we work with strategic processes. So together with the staff and the board, we have to be very agile in our work. So at the board meetings, we have to work on a very dynamic agenda that is always well prepared, containing information that the board requires. The data are presented in the direct, the board can discuss this and make formal decision. This works very well and has been the case for quite some time. The strategic work is also planned in order to respond to the different aspects. So we have the corporate government, we have strategic processes that were defined in the strategic planning of the organization, and then we have some internal processes that are important, for example, the registry policy development and building community, which includes these events. In addition to that, we also relate with the way LACNIC works as an organization on topics that have to do with personnel, with the relationship of LACNIC with other external organizations and from other regions, and how we relate with our members. How does the director, the board operate? There are several ways in which we can communicate. One is the mailing list. In the mailing list, we discuss different topics. We we'll always wait until the topics are discussed in the in-person or Zoom meetings, but we have a list where we discuss things. We also have telephone calls or video calls as well. We also had seven meetings of two hours each. It's never two hours, it's always more than two hours because we have a lot of things to discuss. And we also had seven meetings last year, January, February, March, October and November. We also had in-person meetings. These in-person meetings depend on from one, they can be one to three days long, depending on the topic last year in the month of February, March, May, October, and December, we had in-person meetings, and these uh, events such as these are used for having board meetings. This week, we met on Monday, and on Friday, we'll be having a further meeting as a board to analyze some of the topics. We'll have a board meeting at the next Black Nick event in the month of October, and afterwards, we have other meetings in the course of the year where we discuss what was done in the year in progress and also issues regarding the budget for the following year. And these things are done at the headquarters of LACNIC in the month of December or November. And then we have committees. These committees are very important because having eight members of the board, that as we do have now, plus the staff, we discuss several topics. And sometimes it takes uh, rather long, so the committees uh, speed it up. The committees have different people, two or three members of the committee, plus some members of the staff that uh, review the topics and prepare the uh, some guidelines. So by the time it gets to the board, they've already been chewed and uh, thought of. So uh, the board uh, already receives uh, the uh, different options or recommendations, and uh, that makes it are possible to make faster decisions and it also allows the members to uh, do, we can use the um, most experienced members on different fields so that they can discuss specific issues so the recommendation is very well grounded and that saves time at uh, the uh, board's meetings for instance we have uh, the investment and finances uh, um, committee that uh, includes uh, the manager of finances of LACNIC, the risk committee. And now, I'm sorry, we are not uh, seeing the screen. It's not uh, being projected in the screen. Sorry, but um, so 
Yeah, as you see, it says uh, risks and uh, data security in red because we included that only a few periods ago. And this is something that we have been working a lot with because the risks are increasing. So that is uh, uh, an important thing for the committee. And we are even considering the possibility of having an additional committee for that. We have the ethics committee and we also have representation of the board in the and. ROEC and uh, ASOEC, and uh, those are monthly meetings that we have with those uh, entities, and we choose a member of the board to participate in each of those activities. So, how do we distribute the time of the board? Uh, what was it like in 2023? We had four me 14 meetings, 10 uh, that were two hours each, and four in person, seven days in total. That does not include the participation in committees, the uh, meetings of the committee, nor the discussions in the through email or other means. Time distribution, so we devote much of our time to issues that have to do with organization. And then the second thing that we discuss is the community, internal organization, financial affairs, procedures, operations, and relations with other entities. Even though it is not reflected directly here, there's a, we spend a lot of time to developing policy. For those of you who were present in the public policy forum earlier today, you may have heard that the board was does not engage in the process of policy development because we have a we play a specific role at the end of the process that is ratifying or not ratifying a certain policy. However, the fact that we cannot uh, participate in the f early stages of a process, that doesn't mean that we are not involved. As a matter of fact, we have to read all the policies, analyze them, uh, understand the implications for LACNIC in the community, and be prepared for the final decision. So we monitor all the discussions, and you may be aware with that with the many policies that are debated, requiring, demanding so much time, that takes up much of the time So for, for policy development. But uh, so we use up much of our time in that. So what are the documents that were created during 2023? Even though we have a uh, uh, we have a budget uh, process. Uh, we've had one for many years, but we structured it further. We created a document for that purpose, and we have a process for the approval of the annual balance, the uh, the uh, annual statement, and the, the, we uh, developed the rules for conflicts of interest and uh, the yeah, rules for competencies and uh, um, mm, and adequacy, and we put this in red because uh, we now it is important uh, for the members of the board to be fit and to meet a certain um, uh, of certain requirements, uh, making sure that they're capable of doing their job. So it is thanks to those rules that we sort of filter the people so that those that finally reach the board may contribute with their experience and their knowledge so that they can be effective members of the board when we have elections. So what were the documents that were updated in 2023? The code of conduct of uh, the LACNE community, and here we wanted to include things that had not been included in the previous document for the various members of the staff, the community, the board, and the committees to include all of them and being well regulated. The guidelines for the scopes and responsibilities of the fiscal commission committee. Since we have a finance uh, committee, we have a staffer that works with finances. We have external auditors and a fiscal commission. So we need to understand the role each one plays and the reliability because that makes it clear. And we also updated the procedure for declaring relations, the disclosure, so that we may know that the members of the board and other people that make decisions are not uh, do not have conflicts of interest so we must all disclose whether we have shares in companies whether we are members of a certain organization so that uh, 
maybe if uh, the board is going to make a decision that may have an impact on uh, those uh, conflicts of interest, that person should be left out. That is for the sake of transparency so that uh, we may make sure that we are only defending the interests of uh, the community. What are what were the most important uh, resolutions of the board? Well, in early um, uh, January, there was we had a long meeting where we approved uh, the appointment of uh, positions in the board and uh, appointments in the committee and other representations who will represent the board in uh, certain activities. We also we also have to define the timetable of the meetings of the board and the topics that we are going to discuss. So by January, we already decide uh, when we are going to meet and what are the topics that will be approached during the year. And we also have to approve uh, the annual electoral uh, timetable as the, the schedule of the elections have to follow the procedures. And we need to analyze what are the dates that uh, are the best uh, for uh, the elections. This is one of the things that we discussed in January. In February, we approved the goals of uh, the executive director. Before that, we had already approved uh, the uh, budget um, for the uh, next year. So we analyzed how the CEO will do, uh, relate, what are the responsibilities, and how we're going to measure that uh, the performance is good. In March, we have to approve the call for the ordinary assembly as you saw when we started, we had to approve it and send the call. And we also approved the year annual financial report for 2022. Uh, then in November, we continue to monitor the recommendations of the um, audit and the fiscal commission. And we must see if something is not being implemented, what uh, is missing to uh, comply with the recommendations. And in December, we have a three-day uh, meeting where we uh, go through everything that was done that year. We approve the uh, operative plan and uh, the plans for the following year. And we also approve a contingent budget basically for 2024. Sometimes an organization, for various reasons, as has happened in other meetings, there are organizations that, for a range of legal issues or whatever, do not have a board that can approve a budget. And therefore, the organization cannot execute anything. They stay in limbo, not being able to act. So. To prevent that from happening at LACNIC, now we are approving two budgets, one for the following year and the other one, a contingent one, for a year after next. So even if uh, you have a problems, the budget will be approved, but you um, uh, revise it every year. So although we already have a budget for 2025, by the end, at the end of this year, we will uh, adjust it. And then we will uh, approve uh, a contingent budget for 2026. Other resolutions of the board, here you have a long list. Let me just highlight <coughs> the, where there was an, uh, 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 something that took us a long time, and it is the proposal for adjustment of uh, the fees uh, to be presented to the assembly, because we wanted to make sure that they, they were adjusted to the realities and that we were considering what the different members uh, thought. We devoted a long time to that, both the staff and the board, and we also devoted a long time as to how to develop the contingent budget for 2024 and also for the approval of the budgetary adjustments because of a ex um, type uh, because of exchange rates because we um, um, charge in uh, we collect the money in dollars but we have to pay salaries and everything in pesos Uruguayan pesos so that changes our finances so we have to be paying close attention to that and make the adjustments necessary depending on the fluctuations of uh, our currency and we also um, um, reviewed uh, the appeals. And here there are others that we worked with uh, during the year. So now the last resolutions of 2023, we had to analyze legal and uh, operative uh, risks with the implementation of some proposals. You know, uh, the policy forum is 
an important or oh, the PDP is important and uh, the board is responsible for making uh, LACNIC sustainable in time and operate well. So we have to consider all the risks in our policy proposals and we monitor the work of the committees in this case the uh, um, uh, information security and risk investments and ethics other topics that addressed uh, by uh, the board basically we have reports that we have to check every quarter for instance uh, uh, every six months we have a f uh, uh, financial reports. We have two NIRs, uh, Mexico and Brazil, and we have to make sure that they are complying with uh, um, what is accepted for the region. So we audit them and then they present a re we work with them and they send a report of the audit and we check the audit and we see whether there are any opportunities for improvement. We also have reports of quality audits. Uh, we evaluate each event uh, to make sure that we are meeting the demands of the expectations of the community. Re reporting risks and uh, data security, this is annual, um, and uh, internal control and things of that kind. This is just, to, this is, uh, well, the participation of the board in events. We continue to get uh, trained in institutional government and we have met with different players of the region and uh, other regions, for instance, with uh, the Finances Committee of uh, the ASO Address Council. We also had uh, went to meetings with APNIC 56 and Area 52 and uh, the annual meeting of the board in Montevideo. We also had exchanges with the staff. So basically, this is the report of uh, the activities of the board. We try hard to make uh, organization to continue to advance with the levels of excellence that we have done so far. As you will see in the various reports, uh, the organization is at a level that where it works at an excellent level and client satisfaction, satisfaction with the event and the financial part, we've been very responsible, although we are reaching issues that we have to share with you later today. And basically, also in topics uh, that have to do with the satisfaction of the employees, also at an excellent level, and we are committed to continue to work to maintain it or even improve the levels of excellence a bit. Thank you. Now the executive director, Oscar Robles, will be making his report, uh, the executive summary for 2023. Bueno, muchas gracias. Thank you, Alejandro. Let's now go on to the detailed objectives carried out this year by the staff. I already presented the way in which we present this information. This has been organized based on the different outlooks. Basically, what I would like to convey on this occasion is that our ultimate goal are the actions that you have at the top that are focused on the members and the community. The community is a most extended space. It's not only those who have LACNIC resources, but everyone who participates in these meetings. Now, if you participate in a for-profit organization, these are the elements at the bottom that are most relevant. In our case, those are the main elements in order to be able to do everything that we have at the top and our ultimate goal then are the ones we have in yellow. I'm going to first focus on some of the most relevant findings or actions. So this is what we presented to the board when we finished last year and the level of completeness of some of these objectives. So let us start with the most relevant part. As you can see, these are the number of assigned resources which top, dropped significantly due to the lack of IPv4 space. The limited space that we have assigned are those that were revoked in the course of the year. 
the, uh, this slide shows in further detail precisely the part of the assigned IPv4 space. <coughs> so based on the number of members, this also increased marginally. These are 12,650 at the end of last year. You will note that 10 years ago, we finished 2013 with 2,801 members. So this is a 450% increase of the membership. If anyone is curious to see what our budget was at the time, we had a budget of 5.5 million US dollars annually compared to 10.7 million that we have today. So approximately the budget increased 100%, but the membership increased 450%. This without speaking about that the increase in the resources has been impacted by the inflation over the past 10 years. So this is a good element to show that the board not only seeks to supervise our activities and to make sure that we do what we have to do for the benefit of the community, but we also seek to be efficient and that these resources are used to achieve the objectives for the benefit of the community. Now, unfortunately, the waiting list for IPv4 continues to grow. The amount of resources assigned are not enough to try to make the list recover or start to drop. At present, whoever joins this list has the expectation of having to wait seven years until they receive resources. Today, those who received resources were two years and a half in the list, but if you look backwards, they joined the list around 2021, at the end of 2021. So there is quite a considerable waiting time. Other functions we have is the implementation of the policies arising from the Public Policy Forum. This is an implementation that involves quite a large number of resources, not only because of the technological infrastructure, but also because of the resources required for the services area and the follow-up that has to be done in order to respond to the policy that was approved. This is the policy on contact of abuse, we have to ensure that there has to be a human being that answers these. Sometimes it might be a very sophisticated robot that might be answering these, but we have mechanisms to ensure that there is a human being. We took two years to ensure that all the abuse contacts are validated. We managed to achieve this. These are very uh, tiring processes. The initial stages in the first year, these are automated. There are some contacts with the members where some wish to know what is happening, if there are any issues. And the second part are all personal contacts, personal calls, and updating information to be sure that everything is in order. The annual transfers continue to increase, but nothing too uh, relevant. This is like a cultural issue. There is a sort of a resistance to do these transfers, but we are aware that we have mechanisms that are very solid so that these transfers are done automatically. You don't want to have rapid transfers, but want to have adequate transfers so that these are approved by the legitimate holders of those resources. And that is why we have to make sure that they comply with several elements. One of our greatest strengths is the customer-centered approach, the holder of the resources. Although we are entities that offer these resources in, in the primary markets, in the secondary market, of course, there are many more. So we seek to carry out these activities in a responsible way and adequately in order to meet the needs of our members. Every two years, we conduct a satisfaction survey 
where we try to delve into different actions and services included in the service that might provide some feedback as to what the members think. And we have, as usual, obtained values of excellence which are at 93% and these are in the top two boxes. One of the other things that we saw yesterday that was presented by some of my colleagues in the morning, namely Graciela and Alfredo, has to do with the evidence of more than five hundreds of your credentials of the credentials being sold out in the sold in the market. So it's important to pay attention to the authentic authentication mechanisms and to use a two-factor authentication system at Milaknik in order to prevent your networks from being compromised. We also try to be as close as possible to our members whenever they invite us. We try to respond to these requests and we try to go to events where there are a large number of participants which we also combine with visits to other cities and to meet with the larger members or organize events for a wider participation and also to respond to issues that might occur. One of the most important elements in our service has to do with the growth of the RPKI adoption and the ROA generation among our members. As you can see, it is above 50%. The fact I have is 58%, which is more than 51% of the global average. So we are not behind on this topic. So RPKI adoption is an area where we are leaders. I'm very pleased about this because finally, ultimately, the LACNIC team has dedicated a lot of effort to this service. One of the other services that has increased in adoption is the Internet Routing Registry. The two are very much requested and required by some content networks, as well as data centers or content providers. Regarding those who are interested in Internet measurements, I suggest you visit this website. There you have the QR code while I speak. We publish this mini site in our LACNIC site with mini stats with indicators by country. So I invite you to compare and to revise this information. We have information on our ASNs, on the RTTs, the round trip times to the root servers, our DNSSEC validation, latency, IPv6 deployment, as well as many other resources, which I think are well worth interest, uh, interesting to review and study. We have invested a lot of efforts on behalf of the research and development team with Guillermo and Elisa. One of the things that we hadn't shared with you and we thought would be interesting to share with you are the number of grants that we provide. And this is for the community and associates. These are larger uh, members, why do we have to give a grant to the larger members if they have a lot of money? But you might recall, some of you might recall that about 12 years ago, the Assembly voted an increase in the fees and a percentage of that fees of the major, of the larger members would be used to pay for the fees for one of the uh, events. Some of these organizations had internal difficulties who didn't allow them to invest money in these events. So it was in our interest to make sure that the larger carriers and networks and operators should participate in these events. This was a, a way of achieving this. So this is the first line. Then secondly, we dedicate resources, LACNIC resources, the resources that you provide us with, to provide um, attendance fees or grants 
for smaller members, which include the travel and accommodation for small and medium-sized organizations. In this case, we provide this to 23 countries. Furthermore, we try to bring speakers from the community to make relevant presentations. On this occasion, we invited eight people from the 301 applications. So please compare the number of applications and grants we can provide. And in addition to that, whenever we come to a place like this, we try to attract local talent and people who are interested in LACNIC's life and they don't have to pay for the registration fee. And we consider it's important to relate to the local communities. I will now invite the Electoral Commission to tell us about the electoral processes, which are precisely one of the services that we provide to our members, namely the possibility of electing the authorities and the representatives of the organizations that help us with our institutional life. Bueno, buenas tardes. Good afternoon, dear members. We are the Electoral Commission of LACNIC, first of all. Allow me to tell you how this commission is composed. Nancy Cordoba from Peru. Ignacio Ribeiro from Argentina. And Cristóbal Chapital from Mexico and myself, Maria Jose Franco from Paraguay. I wanted to briefly tell you about the main functions that we have as a commission. One is to monitor and certify the election processes, both from the standpoint of the bylaws and the community. We also verify and control the documents presented by the candidates to provide accreditation and comply with the requirements to access to these positions. We also take care of reservations on any of the candidates. And we have the capacity of eliminating any nominations of candidates that don't comply with the requirements. And finally, we count the voting and determine the final results of these processes and the candidates that are nominated for these positions. In 2023, we had elections of the fiscal and electoral commissions committees and for the fiscal committee we had two candidates to cover one vacancy uh, that election we uh, 871 organizations voted re accounting for seven percent of the total number of entities that uh, are enabled to vote at the time the candidate that one was Mr. Hernan Archidiacono from Argentina for the Fiscal Committee. For the Electoral Committee, we had five candidates to cover two vacancies. At the time, 1,179 organizations voted, representing 10% of the total number of entities uh, that uh, are in a position to vote. The winners were Nancy Cordoba from Peru and Mr. Cristobal Chapital from Mexico. We also had elections uh, of the board. There were, there were three vacancies that had to be covered and 
933 organizations voted in those elections, accounting for 8% of the total number of entities allowed to vote. Um, in this election, uh, there was the uh, um, applicants had to go through a competency and uh, adequacy examination, and at the end, there were uh, three uh, candidates that were uh, accepted, and uh, the winners were Gabriel Adonailo, Carmen Dennis from Mexico, Rafael Ibarra from El Salvador. Here you have a brief summary of the process of uh, elections of the board 2023. Eight uh, forms had been received, seven of which had the appropriate support of the entities. This was a requirement by the statutes. So these people took an exam. There is a minimum percentage that needs to be uh, reached. and. Uh, four approved it, and uh, finally this went through a validation where the, the, they check uh, that the applicant uh, went, uh, completed the full uh, um, exam following the rules of procedure. We also work together with the staff of LACNIC designing an evaluation to implement the mechanism of this uh, uh, competency testing, and in the uh, process, the mechanism was validated. At these elections, the 2023 board um, uh, elected the eighth uh, director, an additional director that had been approved in the 2022 assembly. Let me also mention that um, the summary we gave you correspond to the statutory electoral processes. And with the winners of uh, the uh, board, the fiscal and the electoral committees, and this electoral committee is also in charge of uh, the elections of the community, and we have to evaluate the elections of, as co-moderators of the PDP, of ASOAC and NRO. RC. So this is our picture. We took this picture on Monday at the meeting of this year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank the electoral committee for their because their voluntary work helps us maintain the institutional processes in uh, an adequate uh, manner. I also want to thank Carolina Kofrek, former uh, member of this uh, committee, and Cristobal Chapital, member of this committee, and Marcelo Corradini. The three are true warriors of life. So let me go on with the information of activities and actions what that we have uh, completed for the benefit of the community, not just for our members, but for the entire community. Laura already presented it, so I'm going to skip it. But if you're interested in these topics in my presentation, you can also find them in the session. Uh, what uh, Laura Kaplan presented on Tuesday after the uh, inauguration. So a key part a key part of all these actions and activities that we perform are the way and the process and the infrastructure that we have uh, to carry out all these activities. So I won't um, discuss the details, but I'm going to mention some that are very important. For uh, To complete our activities, we uh, need to uh, work harder uh, and, and our capacity of influence either with actors of the ecosystem or government uh, uh, act players or any entity we work with. So, and it's important to be able to reach them to present ourselves as authorities in our topics. And to that end, we have a, a program for leaders and the other for policy shapers. They're both uh, multi-annual, multi-step uh, 
are programs that have been very important to take the information of what we do, not just at LEDNIC, with also the technical um, activity to people that would never have reached our events or our community. So I invite those of you interested in this program and on these topics. This is uh, the uh, our QR code, and I had a chance uh, to listen to uh, the participations of many of the participants. And uh, regardless, uh, no matter how good technology may be, there are some issues that are pending. There are things we have to solve to make sure that technology develops adequately without leaving out vulnerable groups or people or regions that don't have adequate resources. So I invite you to uh, uh, visit these uh, uh, activities. I'm going to skip some slides for sake of time. We also worked hard to uh, have an effective communication. We updated our tools for periodic regular publications. Uh, the LACNIC news and LACNIC blog, and now not only do we have publications of our staff, but we also invite experts to publish some of their ideas, research, or studies. We continue to uh, get certified uh, by ISO 9001-2015, we certified the short, the events, the development, the policy development, and and the registration process. One of the most important elements that I wanted to communicate is uh, uh, having completed uh, the RPKI, the back. A uh, new back end. Uh, we completed it about three weeks ago. It took us uh, two years to implement it, but really these uh, projects are time demanding um, uh, if we are to realize what we have to improve and do. And uh, since early on, we knew that we had to take the steps to strengthen this and get a commercial uh, grade. Even though we are not a commercial entity, we provide services to many entities like you that depend on our capacity for executing an operation so to keep your services uh, live. RPKI is plays a key role. So we, and I think that we have been successful, not neutrally, but in a, an informed way. We haven't had any complaints of this migration. And uh, so we continue to monitor the development, this development. We implement, finally, we implemented uh, Comprehensive CRM, we had uh, some tools for to support uh, our clients, but we integrated in a CRM about nine systems that we had to provide uh, uh, services to our customer. We released this last uh, month, and I'm sure that we'll be able to provide better services to our cli clients, our members. Um, this is one of the tools that we have for our LACNIC C-CERT. So now let me discuss uh, the development of our human capital. An update of our staff, if you wondered how many people work at LACNIC, 70 people with a seniority, an average seniority of 7.8 years and an age average of 40.5 years and from 10 different uh, nationalities. We always emphasize the climate, the atmosphere in the organization, not just because we want uh, to have a good atmosphere, but because we think that it is essential for uh, achieving our goals, our activities. It is challenging. In, um, after the pandemic, I think it's even more challenging than in the past. But still, we continue to uh, try hard to preserve this uh, our adequate uh, climate. In the latest evaluation, we got a 90% 
uh, of, of the different questions uh, that are, are asked uh, of all our staff, uh, we got a 90% uh, satisfaction. We devote a, l a lot of our effort uh, for training. We have a tool for evaluating a performance 360. Among other elements, we can identify the areas of uh, the opportunities for improvement to define the training plans every year. So it's not just that people say, well, I'd like to uh, get uh, trained in on this or that, but it needs to uh, match the areas of opportunity. Finally, organization resilience. Let me tell you the behavior of uh, revoking, or rather than revoking uh, um, the arrears. We, you, you must see that we had uh, a peak uh, of a couple of Argentine organizations that have a very high category, a lot of resources, and because of their banking system limitations in Argentina, they found it difficult to pay, so they were in arrears. We worked with them hard, uh, trying to see how this payment could be made, and finally, they managed to do it before we revoked them. So now the arrears levels go back to normal. A key element for our sustainability is our reserves. The type of organization we are, we are a nonprofit organization that receives the resources from the services we provide. That implies that we need to have reserves for emergencies. This makes it possible for us to have a liquidity uh, in the case of unforeseen events, natural disasters, pandemics, or a financial global complex, uh, complex global financial crisis. So we went back to our target levels of the reserves. So of course, this is reassuring because we know that there we have a, a financial capacity in case of an emergency. Um, the other significant element of the sustainability of uh, the way we care about risk and the way we approach risks, we, you know that we keep a methodology in which we monitor risks and we can identify how we are doing with the different situations, transferring risks, uh, attenuating them, address them properly and ensure that the risk level is maintained under the threshold that the board as the entity responsible of the organization establishes as the maximum acceptable threshold. And as Alejandro Guzman told you, last year we worked uh, developing a contingency budget that w would give us uh, the ability, the capacity to, to work if, even if the board cannot uh, get together. This, because we, uh, um, this is one of the lessons learned from what uh, Afrinik experienced. Uh, so the board emphasized how we can prevent situations. Uh, uh, for instance, what Afrinik is suffering could affect us. So this is one of the strategies that we implemented to uh, um, uh, buffer these impacts. And finally, there are many more details that I could explain, but because of the time available, we're going to leave the summary here. This QR code contains the annual report for 2023, containing many more details. In case you're interested in the financial part or in the part on activities, you can check this out with this QR code. Por mi parte sería so on my behalf, that would be the summary. We'll be seeing you still, but as part of the information of last year, financial information, I'm going to invite Gabriela Donailo, treasurer of the Lactic Sport, who will be presenting the financial report. Muchas gracias, Oscar. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, everyone. As Alejandro was saying, the positions of the boards are elected based on consensus and elected every year. 
by the members and they have a tenure of one year. Ward Namaya and myself have the responsibility of the Treasury at the organization. We submitted a financial report and we relate with the board, the finance management, the fiscal commission and the external order. As regarding the operational aspects, these are delegated to LACNIC staff, mostly to the finance management. We're also part of the finance committee and cater for the financial administration and regularly review four main areas. These are budget, reserves, investments, and balance. This allows us to do a close and ongoing follow-up of finance through fluid communication between the different parts of this committee. Our financial manager, Diego Mena, will now present the financial report for 2023 and the opinion of the external auditing company. After Diego's presentation, Hernan Arcidiacone, Aristoteles Santas, and Adriana Ibarra, who are part of the Fiscal Commission, will share the work done and the final opinion. It is in that sense that I'd like to take this opportunity and thank the three members of the Fiscal Commission on behalf of the board for the time dedicated to this important activity. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Good afternoon, everyone. We'll now share information with you, which might be useful to better understand the financial reports that are subject to the approval of the members. As you are aware, and for the sake of transparency, LACNIC every year consults an external auditor of the top level to issue a report on the financial statements. This is issued by KPMG. This is a clean and favorable opinion, as you can read here on our balance. All the information on the financial statements, the notes on the uh, balances and the opinion of our external auditors was shared in due time. In 2023, we had some external factors that had a financial impact on the organization, namely two. One is the appreciation of the Ukraine peso vis-a-vis -vis the US dollar, which had a negative impact on the organization due to the increase in the operational costs in dollars. On the other hand, a favorable international environment for investments was the second element that had a positive impact on LACNIC and allowed us, together with other measures adopted and that we'll be sharing with you, to counteract the effect mentioned previously. So let us look at the financial statements. On the left, we have the assets, which are the assets of the organization, and the liabilities, which are the debts and obligations, and the net equity, which is the difference between one and the other. In terms of assets, what is to be highlighted is what you have in in pale green, the reinvestments at longer terms, taking advantage of higher interest rates compared to previous years. Although the total value of the portfolio remained stable in $11 million, we adjusted its internal composition, transferring about $11 million in from short-term to long-term investments. The increase in credits from memberships, as mentioned, Oscar, previously, in the case of Argentina, there were issues and difficulties that fortunately could be overcome. In addition to that, we received a higher financial contribution from Mexico, driven by a new government disposition that promotes the use of IPv6 to entities related to the federal government. And this led to the increase in number of IPv6-only users 
at the, during the first quarter of the year. In terms of liabilities, there's nothing in particular to highlight. The net equity increased slightly compared to slightly compared to the previous year. And this is mostly the result of the financial investments. These results, together with effective cost control measures, contributed to compensate the increase of the operational costs resulting from the dollar exchange rate in the country. Here we have a high-level summary of how these results are achieved. Operational income increased 6% compared to the previous year, whereas the operational expenses increased 8%. Other net results had a significant increase driven by the results of the financial investment, so we could close the year with a positive result. We'll now go into each of these components of the results. Regarding operational income, this table shows the composition and the variations compared to the previous year. This is the same information included in the notes on the financial statement that we shared with you previously. The main variations are those highlighted in the table in blue. The growth of the increase in ISPs response to the increase of IPVX only requests by users, the increase in end users is due to the compliance with the deadlines established by a government provision in Colombia, which forces the users to adopt IPVX. The increase in the financial contribution of the ASNs comes from NIC Mexico. That, sorry, the national internet registry comes from Mexico. And the increase in other income is due to the income of other sponsorships. For example, the support of our sponsors in response to the strengthening of our trade shows. Regarding operational costs, the main increase is in the remunerations, mostly as a result of the legal increase that is mandatory in Uruguay and the dollar peso exchange rate. Most of the remunerations to the staff are in Uruguayan pesos. Dissemination expenses, there was a record number of participants and an increased amount of expenses in terms of logistics at the Merida event. And then we have uh, expenses that are to provide better services to the community and members. As a result of these external factors, we took some measures in a responsible manner. We carried out adjustments to some activities that have to do with travel permanent con expenses, which lead to the decrease in these types of expenses. These are other net results. The results of financial investments in the past year show an increase of $500,000, which is quite significant due to two main factors. In 2022, the Ukrainian conflict affected our portfolio with a loss of $300,000. Nevertheless, our investment policy limited those losses because other organizations in the ecosystem had even higher uh, losses. In 2023, we had very favorable conditions in the financial market with interest rates that duplicated almost those of the previous year. This allowed us to reinvest funds at higher rates than 5%. And finally, prior to giving the floor to the members of the Fiscal Commission, let me reinforce what Oscar previously mentioned regarding the importance of our reserves. To convey the relevance of these reserves, let me mention that for the first time in Lickers, Lick Lechnik's history, the board in 2024 approved a budget with deficit in order to honor the commitments of our mission, because we have a deficit budget, we'll have to use our reserves. So we need to, as soon as possible, change the situation because we cannot have unlimited use of these reserves. I'd now like to invite the members of the Fiscal Commission, Hernán Archidiácono, Idiana Ibarra, and Aristóteles Dantas, to tell us about the work they've carried out and to share their opinion with us. I'm at your disposal to clarify any questions you might have regarding the information I have presented. Thank you very much.
Eu vou deixar a apresentação. Ah, vai ter que passar com o próximo. Sim. Para o seguinte. É três? Perfecto. Bueno. Good afternoon, everyone. We are the Fiscal Commission of LACNIC. I think that ooh, we're always here to speak about the things that are not always pleasant as the debates on policies. So that was just a joke. So the Fiscal Commission has three members that have this role for three years. Every year, one of these positions is renewed. The members can be re-elected provided their eligibility criteria are observed for this commission. We have Adriana Ibarra, Hernan Jose, and myself, Aristoteles. Let us now explain the roles and obligations contained in our bylaws so that the obligations and the knowledge and the things that we do when we take on the responsibility. These are the following responsibilities and obligations to monitor the accounting books and documentations that support the entries and check the status of the cash and the funds and securities in accordance with the bylaws to make suggestions to the board on the contents of the previous item to issue an opinion every year on the annual report, the inventory, the general balance, and the income and expenditure accounts presented by the board and the ordinary assembly at the closure of each fiscal year. To convene the ordinary assembly when the board hasn't done so, and convening the urging the board to do so 15 days ahead of time to request uh, convening the extraordinary assembly when considered necessary and when the board denies to do so this should be justified at the general board of registries civil associations and foundations to convene and inform to the monitoring body the extraordinary assembly when this has been requested unsuccessfully to the board by the members as per Article 14 to monitor the liquidation operations of LACNIC. The Fiscal Commission will carry out its functions in such a way that it does not affect the regularity of the social administration in the event of any reports to investigate and decide on potential lack of compatibility of the members of the Electoral Commission. More information in Articles 20 and 27, Chapter 5 of the Social Bylaws of LACNIC. Further information available is done here. It's just a repetition. Thank you. Well, here you have a uh, uh, list uh, that is non -exhaust not exhaustive of what we do in uh, two working days. Let me highlight some. In general terms, we received many presentations, either from staff members or external members, uh, such as the people of KPMG, that is, uh, they were the external auditors this Term. And then we have the possibility of asking many questions and uh, revealing uh, um, uh, data and evidence of what we expect to be uh, being done. So in general terms, we receive presentations um, 
on uh, administrative and uh, financial uh, results uh, from Oscar, Diego, and his staff. I think that it is essential to highlight that in addition to receiving the presentation from uh, K KPMG, our external auditor this year, we also have uh, private meetings with KPMG where we have a chance to freely ask whatever we wish without uh, uh, the presence of uh, the staff of LACNIC and ask about any questions we may have. Finally, all this is so that we can issue the decision in which we, uh, we all uh, later on close in a, in a wrap up in a closure meeting and we uh, uh, express uh, the recommendations for the board that are usually uh, usually the board pays heed and um, we monitor the uh, what is done from one year to the other thank you yes before we give uh, our decision by the bylaws we want to emphasize that the fiscal committee is independent what do i mean by that that we don't work for lacnic we don't work for the board the members of the fiscal committee are elected by you by the members of the assembly uh, to make sure that uh, we are independent and can represent you as we speak with the external auditors or when we visit uh, the facilities of lacnic to check uh, all the financial issues the work we do is uh, voluntary um, it's worth pointing this uh, out and we travel as Hernan said once a year to Montevideo where we visit LACNIC and it is there that we hold the meetings we spent there about two days and where we interact with uh, different people including the external auditors this is one of the things that we try to check they should know that they can uh, uh, count on us if they needed so far we've never uh, experienced anything like that another important role of the fiscal committee is that at least one member participates in the ethics committee as we mentioned in when we were discussing the policy we have an ethics committee with five members one of which uh, belongs to the fiscal committee and there is an a code of ethics and a code of conduct that applies to the members this year I had uh, to participate as a member of the ethics committee and I just want to point out that you can uh, approach us or any anybody of the fiscal or electoral committee we are available you can reach us if uh, you have any doubts and finally we're going to present the uh, decision of the fiscal committee the accounting uh, uh, was reviewed up to December 2023 as revised by KPMG as an independent auditor the result is favorable and reasonably represents uh, uh, the situation of the area of uh, the uh, accounts of LACNIC and that is why we suggest based on this analysis we suggest uh, the to that the financial statements should be approved because uh, what has been presented actually reflects the situation of likeness so we suggest that uh, the general assembly should uh, approve it as uh, stated in the statutes thank you Uh, I want to thank all uh, the speakers and once again I want to thank the committees because this is a voluntary work and uh, it's uh, time consuming and uh, they do it at Hanram so mm, it's very important for LACNIC so thank you before uh, going to the next uh, uh, items I want to know whether there are any questions about the reports that you've just heard so if you have any comments Please, you can uh, speak up now. Apparently, there are no comments now. So, 
Uh, are you, are you, uh, do you want the phone, the microphone? No. So let's then vote for the approval of the financial statements and uh, the report by the external auditors, the fiscal committee, and uh, the uh, statement of the board. So let's now open the uh, voting. Si alguien tiene algún problema con la votación, por favor. If you have any problems with uh, when you, as you vote, let us know now so we can help you. Oh, here there's someone who needs help. If anybody has any, uh, is any, facing any problems uh, for voting, if you need help, please let us know. Alguien más que esté teniendo. Does anybody is anybody else having trouble voting? Does anybody need help? Muy bien.
Listo. Muy bien. Perfecto. Entonces, última pregunta. So, the last question. Is there anybody that uh, was unable to vote because of technical problems? So, then uh, we close uh, the poll. Having of, uh, so, the results are as follows. 654 votes in favor, 11 abstentions. 43 didn't vote and nobody voted against. So it's uh, approved uh, by a majority. Muy bien. Ahora, punto no so now item three, now we consider the third point of the order of the day, update of uh, the fees. So uh, as and we ask uh, the CEO, Oscar Robles, to present the proposal. Let's listen to uh, Oscar. Thank you again. We are going to tell you about the proposal, though most of you know it if you were there at the webinar or the meeting that we had with the members. You are already familiar. There are no new details. Uh, what I can tell you is that this is a topic that uh, we uh, discussed, uh, we started discussing in the Ordinary Assembly in 2023 in Merida, LACNIC 39, where we explained how challenging it was to preserve the financial uh, um, situation of uh, um, LACNIC considering inflation. So at the time, we started to analyze and to identify a solution that uh, could uh, solve this problem of sustainability with the least impact possible on the members after 12 months work and uh, approaching a number of organizations and entities that uh, were interested uh, and uh, sent us their concerns. This is the proposal that we are submitting to the assembly. The proposal is very simple. Let me read it. I'll read each bullet as follows, to correct the fees based on uh, the inflation impact. Starting in January the 1st, 2025, and every year we'll adjust the fees uh, based on accumulated inflation in the last 12 months. And when we speak of inflation, it's not our currency, local currency, but the US dollar, because that's the currency uh, of our fees. Or the uh, currency that is used as a reference of NIC Mexico and NIC Brazil. During October 2024 and each year thereafter, LACNIC will announce the corresponding adjustment. The adjustment will apply to all IPv4 categories, both for end users and ISPs. It will apply to all IPv6 categories, but this will after the IPv6 only waiver expires. And for those who don't recall this, the IPv6 only waiver is a discount that the board established that will be gradually removed until 2029. At least that is how it has been foreseen. But the board, for some reason, in order to motivate IPv6 adoption, might delay that waiver. So this is established as the expiration of the waiver, there's no point in applying a discount and an increase at the same time. This will not apply to ASNs. It won't apply to ASNs. And finally, in case of extraordinary circumstances, the board, the board may decide to apply a smaller adjustment. As a reference, these are the inflation rates in the United States in recent years. Prior to the pandemic, this was at levels under 3% and even in some years below 1%. Now, during the pandemic, it exceeded these values. The expectation is that by 2024 and then in 2025, these will return to levels below 3%. 
and has a reference both for our members from Brazil, from Mexico, and for those to whom we I directly assign resources, you don't pay a fee for your resources and, uh, and another fee for your social membership. It's just one fee. Those who already pay for resources to LACNIC, or those who pay to NIC Mexico, those who pay to NIC Brazil, allow you to participate in LACNIC's life. These are what we call the membership fees. It's not that you have to pay for additional fees. So automatically, just because you pay resources, the number of resources already have LACNIC membership, which entitles you to the number of resources, which is the essential part, and it's the raison d'etre of LACNIC and primordially the IPv4, IPv6, or ASN resources. Some only have IPv6 and ASNs, but ultimately these are the three types of resources. And as a reference, LACNIC now has a 600 US dollar fee. For a, in the secondary market, you might pay $7,000 as a reference, these are the costs. One slash twenty-four now is six hundred USD at LACNIC. This is a real value, and the secondary market seven thousand US dollars. Some of the additional services to the number resources are the following, and it's important to mention these. I referred to these when I presented my summary. These are. RPKI implementation and the possibility of creating your ROAs to provide secure routing. The Internet Routing Registry is there to facilitate routing activities and geolocation, which is for content services and intellectual property issues, which some content providers require in the past. This was a voluntary but at present, some content providers already require this, and if they don't have geolocation adequately configured, they start having problems. One of the most important efforts we do in the LACNIC campus is capacity building to our members. This is open to anyone in the community, but the focus is on our members. And this is free of charge for all the members. They are not charged for this, but for the rest of the community, they do have to pay a fee. But all our members have the possibility of participating in any of the activities of LACNIC's campus. In the past years, past 10 years, we have provided training to 50,000 professionals on the different topics that are relevant for LACNIC. Last year, we announced the introduction of specialty activities in the fields of network operations, ISP, uh, university campus, and data centers. And something that is most relevant are these meetings, these spaces, not only this assembly, but all the other seven paths uh, where this activity in Panam is taking place. There are other activities like Peering Forum, like IX, like NICS Tec Technical Forum, like NOG, the Internet Society, and like these search all carry out efforts in order to continue interacting and building this community, generating opportunities to grow their businesses and the entities they represent. And this obviously requires maintaining the investments that represent spaces such as these, which are subject to inflationary situations. It's not the same thing to organize an event in 2024 in Panama compared to the event held in 2018 in Panama. The costs are significantly higher now, even though in terms of inflation on paper, it might only seem to be 20%, but in fact, the cost of these events has increased 30 to 40% in the case of some of the services. 
Here we prepared some of the frequent questions that I mentioned, both during the webinar and also in the meetings we had yesterday. I'm going to read these out in case some of you didn't listen to these questions. And you have these as a reference. Why in US dollars? And already mentioned that our fees are in US dollars or referenced in that currency, and all our expenses have a direct or indirect impact because of this currency. What would occur if all of a sudden we would have deflation? This is not very likely, but considering the situation in past years, but we would be following the same criterion that we have in this proposal in the sense that with positive inflation, the board might decide to apply or not this update. Another question is why are the ASNs not considered? And this is because we apply a discount to ASNs for the smaller categories, so a 50% discount for the smaller categories. And we think that the first thing would be to consider in withdrawing or removing that discount and then updating these. We haven't yet foreseen removing that discount or eliminating this discount, so it would be appropriate to adjust this by inflation. Why do you decide to apply this to end users and to non-profit organizations? This is because we think that the update should be as equitable as possible. Inflation does not distinguish with type of organization this is like, if they provide internet services or not. So we decided to do this as equitable or isonomic as possible, depending on the size or the type of member. Why inflation and not a fixed amount? This is a question we received because someone is aware that AP NIC, they approved at the Executive Council or the Board at LAC, uh, they approved an increase of 4.3% annually, and this regardless of the inflation rate. So they asked us, why didn't we do that? And we did study this, but we consider this is not appropriate when the inflation isn't that relevant, and this is what we wish to avoid. What we wish to avoid is that when it is not necessary to not apply an increase in the fees. What would occur if this is not enough to recover LACNIC's financial capacity at that moment? We would then have to consider or applying other measures, but we are convinced that the uh, order of the finances of LACNIC can, and re, as a result of the investments, we will have, we had extraordinary benefits for our reserves. So it is expected that the interest rates will maintain the same values or levels as last year. So we are confident that with this measure and with our organized finances, we will then have sufficient results for this measure to be enough. If this were not enough, then the board might have to resort to other measures. So this is the proposal. And I am available in the case in case you have any questions. Thank you, Oscar. I'd like to make a comment. And once again, you will recall that this was submitted last year during the assembly. This was included in the agenda. There was a proposal that recovered the lactic's operational capacity and the loss by inflation. Nevertheless, there were questions from the community and from members and wanted to listen to that. That is why we did not include it in last year's approval. We took a full year to discuss this with different players. So this is not a proposal that the staff is playing, putting forward unilaterally. This is a proposal that was discussed with different players in the region and with many members, including the NIRs. So therefore, uh, 
we want you to be aware of the process that we followed. This was a participatory process, and we are now submitting this formally to this assembly. But we are at your disposal. In case you have any questions or comments to make to this proposal, please feel free to do so at this moment. Muy bien, entonces, no habiendo, eh, As there are no comments or questions, we will now proceed to the approval of the update of the membership fees. We are going to proceed to voting the proposed member fee, membership fee update. Alguien tiene alguna dificultad para la votación? Does any have anyone have any issues with the voting? If anyone has any issues, please let us know. Además de los que están ayudando en este momento, hay alguien más. Does anybody else have trouble? Perfecto. Ok, muy bien. Última oportunidad. Si alguien tiene. So, this is your last chance. If you're having trouble, please uh, say so now. Well, apparently everybody's doing fine. So, let's close uh, the voting.
Habiendo entonces, eh, so now let's close the voting and uh, let's see the result for 104 votes in favor. 208 votes against, 41 votes uh, abstentions, 60 didn't vote for 713 votes. So, so this uh, motion is approved uh, by a majority. So now let's consider the fourth point item appointment of the members to sign the minutes. As the president of the chair of the assembly, uh, I suppose and uh, I uh, propose Edmundo Casares and I, sir, to sign. So now this is not this is a non-controversial voting, so the system for voting will be closed in five minutes. Sí, 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 sí. Ahí te salimos o no salimos. Pero es que no, yo creo que seguridad no podemos no, hacer eso. Sí, claro. No, vamos a hacer una cosa. Entonces, como ya el umbral pasó la mayoría, entonces en este. So now we approve it. Let's vote. So. It is approved by a majority with 433 votes in favor, zero against, 60 abstentions, no votes against. So it's approved by a majority, and as there are no more items to discuss, we at uh, 6.20 Panamanian time, we thank you all for participating. Titanic cuando se va a y nosotros nos vamos prendiendo fuego.